For every main object that has the connectivity support property set to offline, an object called offline database is created. As it's created, we'll be able to see the tables that will be added to the local database. The programs to create the local database are also created in the device's native language. This object is responsible for determining when the synchronization is run and which data is of interest when synchronizing with the server tables. The offline database object also has events and conditions to determine its behavior. Let's see some of the most important properties of the offline database object. In the receive group, we have the data receive criteria property, which will be used to receive data. The available values are as follows. When the application is started, this is the default value and indicates that the app will start receiving data after startup. With the value after elapsed time, Data will be received when the time indicated in the minimum time between receives property, expressed in seconds, has elapsed. Also, it's made when the application is started. The manual value indicates that data will only be received manually. Here, an action must be performed to start receiving it. Lastly, the never value indicates that data will never be received by default. Genexus will not generate the necessary synchronization programs, which must be manually implemented if necessary. As we've already seen, the data receive granularity property allows us to establish the data reception mechanism, which can be by row, the default value, or by table. Then, the send changes property will allow us to establish when we want to send the data from the device to the server. The available values are as follows. When connected, this is the default value, indicates that the data will be sent immediately after detecting a connection. The manual value indicates that data will only be sent manually. Here, an action must be performed to start receiving it. And the value never indicates that data will not be automatically sent by Genexus. The modified records will not be stored in the auxiliary table GX pending event. So if data needs to be sent, the developer is responsible for programming all the required logic. If the manual value is used to send or receive data, or to provide more features to the user, we need to develop actions that perform the synchronization. To this end, the synchronization API is used. This API is not found in the references like the rest of the APIs, but is part of the grammar. It has the send and receive methods for synchronization, server status to determine the server status, and reset offline database to return the local database to its initial status, whether by running a create database operation to empty the tables, or using a preloaded database. With this API, we could, for example, develop options in a panel for the users to trigger the synchronization when they want it. Here we can see a very simple example where the two methods are used in the same event. Let's see an example in Genexus. We've created part of an application for a travel agency with a menu object and work with objects for attraction and country as items. We open the travel agency offline database object, which was created by setting the connectivity support property to offline. First, we'll configure the offline database object for the synchronization to be made every 15 seconds. We go to the properties, and in the data receive criteria property, we enter the value after elapsed time. And, in minimum time between receives, we enter the value 15. Now, in the send group, in the minimum time between sends property, we'll also enter the value 15. With this configuration, the minimum time between sending or receiving data in our application will be 15 seconds. Let's try this. We save, 
and do a rebuild all of the application. Okay, the changes are made. We'll run it on mobile and web, accessing the country work with in both cases. Let's create a new country from mobile. When refreshing on the web, the information is immediately updated with the country that has just been entered because the first send is automatic. But if before 15 seconds have elapsed, we enter another record, when we refresh the web screen, it still doesn't appear. This is because the 15 seconds that we configured have not passed between one entry and another. Since this period has not elapsed, we'll have to wait this time for the synchronization. We're going to refresh the panel, and the registered country will appear. Now we'll enter the first country created and delete it. We confirm. We go to web and refresh. Since less than 15 seconds have passed between the last data entry and the deletion, we'll have to wait that time after the deletion for the synchronization to be made. And that's it. The information is now updated in the server. Now we're going to program a panel that allows us to perform the synchronization when the user wants it, with no need to wait for the established time. I've already created a panel called DB Synchronization, which for now has only an image and a text. We add it to the Travel Agency menu and save. We want the synchronization to be performed when the user taps on the image, so we're going to program the tap event. In this event, since it's on the client side, we're going to use composite. Remember that synchronization will always be started on the client side. So we type synchronization.send, which will send the data from the device to the server, and synchronization.receive to do the receiving. We're also going to give the user some feedback about the action they're performing. For this, we're going to use progress. Progress is an external object that uses a panel to show what's going on. As a title, we enter synchronizing database. Also, we'll enter a description in progress.description. We have to indicate the type of progress we're going to use. We'll use indeterminate which is used when we don't know or can't indicate the degree of progress of the process. We show the control with progress.show. Next, we perform the send. When it's finished, we could change the description, so we'll enter a text in progress.description. Then we do the receive, and again, we change the description to indicate that it's complete. Finally, we have to hide the control, so we write progress.hide, which is the method that hides it. We run the application. Good. We already have the application in the emulator and for the web. Let's add a country again from the mobile application and confirm. If we update in the web application, we immediately see the synchronization because the first send is automatic. But if we add another country right away and go to the web application, it's not displayed. We're not going to wait 15 seconds for it to synchronize. We're going to do it manually. We tap on the icon, which indicates that the send is finished. And now we can see the country entered. Now we're going to delete it from the device and confirm. We're not going to wait. We go to synchronization, tap, and now we see the changes as soon as we refresh. In this small demo, we saw how to configure some properties of the offline database object. Also, we saw how to use the synchronization API to run send and receive operations at the user's request.